And I'd like to acknowledge also the other students from the participating schools. And I know that you are all eager to find out what we must do to raise our country in the best possible light. Now, I'd like to start by presenting to you a slide. The slide that I'm showing you uh, represents how, according to the Constitution, this is really the design of the distribution of power in our country. Usually, hindi po sa atin ipinapaliwanag kung paano ba talaga ang mga bahabahagi ng ating Constitution ay nagkakatagputagpo. But this will describe for us how temporal power, and that means yung institutions po, na nakikita natin, no? yung mga powerful institutions or yung entities po work in such a way to regulate, promote, and restrain social behavior. We start off with uh, what we always have been understood as a principle that is basic in our country, which is the Constitution as the highest man-made law in the Philippines. And because of that, it is required to be obeyed by all who fall within the jurisdiction of yung ating uh, territory. All those who fall within uh, the power of Philippine authorities are bound actually to obey the Constitution. But one thing that is important is to see that even when the Constitution allots power to humans, it recognizes that God is the highest authority because the preamble acknowledges the need of Filipinos to call upon God. Tingnan nyo naman yung language, no? We, the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of Almighty God. That means that God for us Filipinos is not an impersonal divine being, but is a personal God who is the source of great help because we are asking Him to in fact help us achieve all our social goals which are identified in our very constitution. Now, the preamble together with certain specific provisions of the constitution demonstrate that God is considered to hold the highest power even over temporal affairs and acknowledge the role of prayer and faith in public life. The highest temporal power is given to the collective called Sovereign Filipino people. Ito po ay entity that is made up of all citizens, even those residing abroad. And especially, and I want to give special emphasis to this, ina-identify ng constitution ang role ng youth. Now, this collective or corporate entity, they have expressed their will in a covenant called the Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. And itong sacred covenant na ito, because it is made in the form of an oath, even invoking the help of Almighty God. You know, this was ratified by 77% of all those who voted in the 1987 plebiscite of all Filipino citizens of majority age. And sinabi ng Supreme Court, it was validly ratified in a plebiscite. Now, this sovereign Filipino people, tayo yun lahat, no? Through the Constitution, adopted a social goal that is godly, a basic social goal, which is that of establishing a just and humane society. Now, itong social goal natin of establishing a just and humane society, it resonates with the biblical concept of wholeness, peace, harmony, prosperity, justice, and righteousness. At the same time, ang linaw, no? That the preamble's values are kingdom of God values. Truth, justice, peace, freedom, love, and equality. As holder of all temporal power, the sovereign Filipino people, again, all of us, only delegates power to government as its representative. Every government official is bound to obey the Constitution, even the President cannot assume office without vowing to uphold the Constitution. In the Philippines, no one is a king. It is even prohibited to give any title of royalty because the key to governance in the Philippines is accountability. A king, in the political sense, is the source of laws and powers. That is not the case here in our country. It is the people who are the source of power. Every government official is a temporary power holder. Pinahiram lang sila for a limited time ng kanilang powers. 
lahat sila ay may end or end of term. Lahat sila kailangang mag-report sa boss nila na ang sovereign Filipino people. Itong government structure na ito has a checks and balances mechanism. The first level in the government structure are the three co-equal great branches of government, the legislative branch, the executive branch, the judicial branch. Yung executive department, which is headed by the president, is here, no? The legislature is co-headed by both the Senate president and the Speaker of the House. And the judiciary is headed by the Supreme Court, led by the Chief Justice. So the Chief Justice is not the subordinate of the president. The Supreme Court is required to be independent so it can protect the people against government abuse. Especially because, let us remember, the government powers that we have lent them are so huge. Many among our people fail to appreciate the truth that Filipinos need a tanggulan ng karapatan. If you remember noon, some, some uh, Filipinos were saying to naman si Chief Justice, hindi sumusunod at nababaw kay Presidente. But the Chief Justice is specially required to be loyal only and only to the people, not to be subordinate to the President because her role is to protect the people from abuses of power. The COA, Civil Service Commission, the COMELEC, the Ombudsman, and the CHR are the independent branches that should be scrutinizing the exercise of powers within their jurisdictions, even if the powers are being exercised by the great branches of government. So, itong COA, Civil Service, Ombudsman, and CHR, they're the foremost major accountability units for government finance, personal actions, anti-graft and corruption, and the observance of human rights by government. They should be impartial kasi ang role nila ay maging kakampi ng taumbayan. The people should have a direct link with them. The COMELEC is the chief manager of elections and should be the impartial referee of most election contests. Now, yung central bank naman na, natin is now the Bank Central ng Pilipinas and the independent planning agency here is temporarily the NEDA which is supposed to be uh, independent in the sense of really uh, recommending to Congress a uh, economic development policy that really uh, addresses the most important needs of the people. It's not supposed to be under the office of the president, but so far we have a temporary structure. Now, it's important. When this constitutional design works, then the people are able to make sure that their needs are prioritized and that the dangers they face are minimized. For example, if there is accountability, ibig sabihin, alam ng government officials na sisingilin sila ng taong bayan, that we will have a check on their performance, then we can ensure that the following are prioritized and enough budget is given. We will have enough vaccines. We do not need to be on a long lockdown. Our people can have enough food. Our youth can be educated well and we can plan our future. It is because itong mga kabataan, uh, seryosohin natin ito. Yung sovereign Filipino people, we, have not risen to our role. That is why our people remain poor. That is why we are exploited and continue to be invaded by foreigners in uh, not an actual physical invasion of our shores. But makikita nyo naman, hindi rin nerespeto ang ating teritoryo at ang ating natural resources ay nagagamit ng maraming foreign entities without a uh, legal basis. We are also in danger of being gunned down anytime. Money can facilitate the release of rich people from jail, but will detain poor suspects in jail for years on end. It is because we did not scrutinize how government spends our budget, our money. That is why we don't have basic health care, hospitals, our food prices are so high, and there are so few jobs. On the other hand, kung tayo magsasama-sama, if we, the sovereign Filipino people, make this constitutional design that we are checking on them, work, 
then the future of the youth will be more assured. So much of our future lies in the hands of the voters, many of them young. Now, ang tanong ko sa iyo, sa inyong lahat, will you work for that future? You know, I come from a uh, deep uh, conviction, and I have witnessed this, that God is ever ready to help those who call on Him. And as you can see, we, our people, have been running to Him for help for a long time. But we have not acted correctly on our role that He has given us to be the sovereign Filipino na tayo ang accountability keepers, na tayo nagbabantay sa bayan natin. So we have not been discharging our role. Kaya nagkakagulo-gulo tayo. This time, I urge all of you, let us act. Let us not waste the opportunity given to us. Make good governance work for you, your family, and your nation. Maraming maraming salamat po. God bless you all.